So for just a second, I'd like to take a step away from the anime stuff once more and talk to you guys about something that means just as much to me as anime does. A certain part of my childhood, a series that changed a generation and a line of games that have made billions and billions of dollars. The Grand Theft Auto series. For as long as I can remember, Grand Theft Auto has been a part of my life. From playing the bird's eye view of Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2, transitioning to 3 with its third person perspective in lovely Liberty City, exploring Vice City as Tommy Vassetti, following the damn train with CJ, to going from blocky style graphics of the PlayStation 1 and 2, to a game that was so big of a leap at the time in the evolution of gaming, that I remember merely driving a car in that game was one of the funnest things I ever did as a kid. Though all the other Grand Theft Auto games were iconic and extremely vital pieces to the series puzzle, San Andreas in particular being the game that is one of the most popular forms of entertainment ever made, and one that I can remember almost every line of dialogue to. There is, however, another game that was just as vital, if not more important, to the franchise of Grand Theft Auto. The year of 2018 marks the 10th anniversary of Grand Theft Auto 4. Grand Theft Auto 4, as of today, has sold close to 30 million copies across all platforms and, as I said before, was an extremely important game during the late 2000s. The jump from San Andreas was like going from a water pistol to a real gun. The driving mechanics, ragdoll physics, movie-esque characters and a story that was written like a Quentin Tarantino movie were all things that hit you straight away. I think like all Grand Theft Auto games, the best part about these games is that as soon as you get to a safe house, you can either follow the intro intricate, well thought out stories, or you can just mess around and have fun for hours. Which is exactly what Grand Theft Auto 4 did best, but you could also do it with 16 other people in game. Grand Theft Auto 4 was incredibly important during the time that it came out, because it released at a time when the multiplayer systems for both the Xbox 360 and the PS3 were absolutely booming. I made friends on that game in the years of 2008 and 9 that I still speak with to this day, which I can also mark as a 10 year anniversary, because if it were not for Grand Theft Auto 4, I would have never met them. I even met people from places like Russia, the USA, Canada, and England. People who I would have never met otherwise, all because I would join random free mode lobbies, drive around, kill people, and just talk general shit. When it came to Grand Theft Auto 4 for me, I was more of an online player than a campaign guy. Sure, I loved the campaign a lot, but Rockstar absolutely killed it with how they made the online mode. The campaign was incredibly thrilling, the sandbox world was extremely fun to mess around in, even while not strictly following the story itself, and the modding community was insanely popular not only in the general sense of modding the game, but all over YouTube and even to this day, people are still making mods for this game. But the online for Grand Theft Auto 4 was something different. It was simple, easy, and what I would call the American dream. When you jumped into an online match, you made the most of what you could. There was no weapon wheel, which consisted of 54 different types of rocket launchers, sticky grenades, and every gun stored up your ass crack to whip out at any time. There was no vehicles that looked like they were from Saints Row, and there certainly wasn't any pay to win garbage involved. The Guns were spread out all across the city, the cars were scarce, you could change every aspect and rule of the online mode, and I even remember playing Grand Theft Auto 4 in 2013, five years after its release, and still finding cars I've never seen and buildings that could be explored and entered. In the online, you had to actually have skill with recall control, driving, and map awareness. You might think it's a joke, but Grand Theft Auto 4 was a skillful game. These boat-like cars were not easy to drive at first, and the gun mechanics did not hold your hand like they do in Grand Theft Auto 5. As someone who also loved the Halo series as a kid, I noticed that when Rockstar Games took away the simple feeling of GTA Online from 4 and changed it in 5, it felt similar to Halo's paradigm shift in their online multiplayer. This change inevitably became the downfall of GTA's online learning curve, just as Halo went from a simplistic yet effective online multiplayer where you had to have spatial awareness and decent aim to get by, to Halo Reach being quite similar to Call of Duty in the fact that they added a copious amount of abilities and classes you could select before spawning. Granted, these were set classes that usually only change the armor ability, however, it still didn't feel like a true Halo to me. The game itself to a lot of people is still considered to be a fantastic game. I know plenty of individuals who like Reach and its changes. Its undoing can also be attributed to how a lot of people during that time period just naturally moved on to more popular titles at the time. Call of Duty being the biggest hitter in Halo's path with monolithic titles such as World at War, Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops 1. But the fact still stands, it had radical changes in its mechanics and coincidentally fell out of the major spotlight that it once had. Bit of a coincidence. Incidents? No. Sure, there have been Halo titles after Reach, but do you hear about it as much as you did between 2003 and 2010? Now, I could go through all the nostalgic reasons as to why Grand Theft Auto 4 was so amazing, but you guys have heard it all before and I'm sure you've all got your own experience with the game too. Grand Theft Auto 4 
worked. But how does this all reflect on Rockstar Games? Whether it's Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead, or even Midnight Club, I've always had respect for this company and the hard work they put into their games, shots of pop culture, their all-round visions with each game, and even the way they never back down from public scrutiny, be it political or even legal. Rockstar Games have kind of been the South Park of the video game industry. Just take for example the Statue of Happiness. In Grand Theft Auto 4, it was originally going to be a complete replica of the Statue of Liberty in New York City. In San Andreas, as we all know, there was a notorious feature in game called Hot Coffee, where you as the player could take your in-game girlfriend on a date, drive her home, and engage in a mini-game of fornication. Now, everything except the sex part was kept in the game, but hackers were able to get inside the PC version of the game and show that Rockstar had not fully removed this feature. Normally, no one could play it. In fact, to access it, you would seriously need to know what you are doing in terms of coding the game itself. This was especially the case for those on console, which outsold the PC version by leaps and bounds. So it was borderline impossible for the average 10-year-old to hack into their PS2 of all things. After this became why widespread news, Rockstar was in hot water, or hot coffee if you will. I even found a news article from 2005 that shows all the details involved, which states the following. Tomorrow in the country's capital, Senator Hillary Clinton will call on the Federal Trade Commission to launch an inquiry into the hot coffee mod, sources have told GameSpot. Clinton, a vociferous critic of violence in the media, will be joined by David Walsh, president and founder of the National Institute of Media and the Family, Mary Bissell, fellow at the New American Foundation and Kirsten Stewart, director of public policy for the Family Violence Prevention Fund. Clinton is expected to call on the FTC to determine who is responsible for the Hot Coffee mod, a modification that unlocks sexually explicit minigames in Rockstar's recently published PC version of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. While the game is rated M and therefore not readily sold to those below the age of 17, the mod is easily available online. Rockstar later on went to change the face of the Statue of Happiness from this to this. If you've been a fan of Grand Theft Auto around the times that this took place in the media, then I'm sure you've all heard of this fellow as the years went by, Mr. Jack Thompson. After the Heath High School shooting, which occurred at Heath High School in West Paducah, Kentucky on the 1st of December 1997, 14-year-old Michael Carneal opened fire on a group of praying students, killing three and injuring five more. Mr. Jack Thompson got involved with video games after the shooting in 1997 and 1999 with the parents of the victims when they tried a $130 million lawsuit against gaming giants Nintendo, Sega, and even Sony. Jack Thompson, as you can tell, tried to imply that things like pornography, music, media, and video games had desensitized the shooter, and even giving him marksmanship skills and ammo conservation awareness. This lawsuit was then later on rejected by the courts. After his failure, he became incredibly notorious for his ignorant views on video games, with multiple attempts at taking down Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas. He even went as far to say that Grand Theft Auto 4 was the worst thing given to children since polio and was also quoted saying that Sony selling the game was the equivalent of the Japanese bombing Pearl Harbor. For the next 10 years, he became a meme among the Grand Theft Auto community, lost his bar as a lawyer for sketchy practices and failed lawsuits, then fell into non-existence years later. Rockstar Games even trolled the BBC, or better known as the British Broadcasting Commies, after they released the documentary called Game Changer, which went over the trials and controversy the company has been through. Daniel Radcliffe was even included in the documentary, the man known best for playing Harry Potter. To put it short, this was a company that I as a fan, since a youngin, had a lot of faith in. I knew they were very self-aware and a company with integrity and balls. Rockstar even went as far to share fan videos from YouTube, awesome mod related videos and even a movie made entirely in-game. So what is my issue with Rockstar? If you watch this far through the video, you'd think that this company was a gift from God himself. Quality games, they don't care about controversy and they appeal to their fans. Well my issues stem from a few things. Since the release of Grand Theft Auto 5, things have gone absolutely downhill with the series. They fired Leslie Benzies, who worked with Rockstar for 20 years after he went on paid leave on the 1st of September 2013. According to Mr. Benzies, he was persuaded to take six months paid leave and Rockstar even fired his son during that time period and some friends they both work with at the company. They also cut Leslie's access to company emails and when he returned to work in Rockstar North Scotland, he was ordered off of the premises by the office security. Apparently Grand Theft Auto Online was part of this because the Hauser brothers had little interest in Grand Theft Auto Online for Grand Theft Auto 5, but Benzies placed his name in the prize spot at the end of the opening credits, a place usually only held for Sam Hauser. On top of all of this, Benzies had apparently missed out on around $150 million in royalties with Grand Theft Auto Online. Or how about when Rockstar Games took down OpenIV, a modding tool used to mod both Grand Theft Auto 4 and 5 as a blanket system to stop Grand Theft Auto Online from being hacked and a Liberty City map being made into Grand Theft Auto 5 as a mod. Now, Rockstar's seemingly virtuous goal 
of this wasn't to keep the game pure, because in the past they've shown their support for the modding community. The goal, however, was to stop players from being able to duplicate in-game currency for Grand Theft Auto V's online mode in the PC version. Also, with 2018 being the 10th anniversary for Grand Theft Auto IV, there wasn't a single noise from Rockstar Games at all. No remaster announcement, no Grand Theft Auto IV shitty $30 t-shirts, no Liberty City map in Grand Theft Auto IV as a DLC. Hell, unlike Vice City and Grand Theft Auto III, there wasn't even a mobile game announcement. In fact, speaking of the online in Liberty City, we've had neither a major online DLC, story DLC, or even a North Yankton map edition. The game released in September of 2013 and has yet to have a single major DLC. Whereas with Grand Theft Auto IV, it's seen two DLCs added in 2009 and Red Dead Redemption's DLC of the Year Undead Nightmare, releasing in October the 26th, 2010, the same year both of those games released. The biggest things we've had with Grand Theft Auto V is a premium online edition and a huge list of overpriced in-game cars, weapons, and random stupid bullshit that no one honestly gives a fuck about at all. What's so disappointing about Grand Theft Auto V is how much time went into the game, how long we had to wait for it with delays, and even five years after its initial release, it still had nothing added to it except shark cards, vehicles, and in-game aesthetics. According to Value Walk, Grand Theft Auto V has become the most profitable game in history, selling around 100 million copies across all platforms and making 1 to 2 billion USD in multiplayer purchases alone. Almost all coming from shark cards, which you need to buy anything from cars, guns, houses, clothing, to even a car that looks like it's from fucking Saints Row. Grand Theft Auto V was the most ambitious, in-depth, and biggest title Rockstar Games has ever made to date. During the teasing and lead up to the game itself, we learned that almost the same amount of money had gone into this game as did Pirates of the Caribbean, which had a budget of $300 million, and Grand Theft Auto V's budget being $265 million. Now, I can't lie, the campaign definitely gives you your $60 worth. The game actually equates to around 100 hours playtime, so regardless of some issues, it's not entirely bad. But the online, which was hyped up to be the quote, next step in Grand Theft Auto, has been nothing but horrendous and gets stale after 30 minutes of driving around. It helps nothing when the online mode was delayed for two weeks after the game actually released. To add insult to injury, the loading times for the online itself was and still is hot garbage. Some people would actually sit there and watch fly as fuck as they began to graduate college hoping to join a full free mode lobby. If you merely take a look at Facebook, Twitter and most social medias where people are talking about the game itself, it's always constant disappointment. It usually consists of people being upset that there is still not a slither of story DLC and all Rockstar does is throw new cars at us every month or so. Now, some may say that this is take two interactive pushing this marketing plan, but the people at Rockstar are still consciously being utter snake oil salesmen. They got so greedy with the shark cards and in-game currency that they actually removed the ability to move your profiles from the 360 and PS3 to the newer consoles, just to stop people from botting their money on the old consoles and moving them to the newer ones. They can euphemize it with that excuse, but the truth is, it's a spit in the face to those who grinded their accounts on the old consoles and never got a chance to move theirs to the newer ones, and it's covered with this blanket ban excuse. I see time and time again with loyal players of the game that some people just want something as simple as a reskin Liberty City or Vice City map added to the game, or even something as basic as a zombie mode, which actually won Red Dead Redemption DLC of the year in 2010. There is only so much cars, weapons, and shitty clothing you can add to a game before it becomes incredibly repetitive, and the appeal to the child demographic of the game has ruined Rockstar's credibility as a studio that I thought was all about quality over being mainstream trash, which is made further ironic because in this same game, Grand Theft Auto V, they actually fire shots at Call of Duty many times on the radio stations in-game. My biggest concern with all of this is that with Red Dead Redemption 2 releasing later this year, is that they are going to take a game that you would think to yourself, it will be fine, you know, it's set in a time period where kids can't reverse into you with a supercar that has no back windshield, they can just reverse up, shoot you, throw bombs at you and kill you, you know, all that really, all that gay shit. And there will definitely not be any orbital cannons, homing missiles or jets, it will, it will be fine, you know, it's gonna be fine, it's set in a time period where none of that bullshit can happen. Only for them to have Marty McFucking Fly appear in a DeLorean and kill everyone in a free mode lobby. My goal with this video isn't to stop you from supporting Rockstar Games. I want you to support them and show your distaste for the direction their games have headed these past few years. As someone who grew up with these extraordinary pieces of media, I will still buy them. However, it's hard not to be let down by them. I really do pray Grand Theft Auto Moscow, Tokyo, or whatever the fuck else releases next will not have the same fate that Grand Theft Auto V did. For now, I will be enjoying Red Dead Redemption 2.